Y'all, we back. The game, new unit, brand new game. Here. So, in Train Sim World 3. Started going in showcases. Uh, new features here in regards of uh, training modules. Is here for a minute. <coughs> I already did, did this one, so we can do this one next. Also, using the uh, rail driver, the rail controller, so it simulates a uh, real game. I mean the real aspect of the game to a uh, actual real controller that only are in uh, real trains. So. We'll see how it plays out. Normally, if I play it. These games they normally be um, sort of uh, power hungry sometimes. So we'll see what it what we come up with. <coughs> Try to turn all the settings down so it won't be too much on the uh, on the PC and make it choppy. So let's see what we come up with. This is a special duty Type 40 locomotive built by the Electromotive Division of General Motors. Known as an SD40-2, this locomotive is one of the most successful designs of all time. The 16-cylinder uh, diesel electric motor provides a stomping 3,000 horsepower. to the locomotive as indicated. door and proceed inside. To take control, you'll want the engineer's seat. Head over and sit down. Controls are kind of funky when it comes down to the, uh, especially when you're using the track R. So you may see me spinning around and doing Take a minute for it to kick. And like I said, third time I really got a chance to really showcase this game. 
safety always comes first on the railroad. So to start with, we need to let those around us know this locomotive is operational. Begin by turning the forward headlights control to bright. There are three key controls to operating this locomotive. The reverser, brakes, and throttle. The reverser determines direction of travel. Put this into forward. To the left is the auto brake, which applies brakes along the entire length of the train. Let's move this to release. We're about to move, so make two blasts of the horn to alert anyone around. Remember, it's safety. Now add some power, but not too much. Too much power too soon can damage both the locomotive and the cars. Always start off nice and slowly. Increase the throttle lever by one notch.
This is a special duty Type 40 locomotive built by the Electromotive Division of General Motors. Known as an SD40-2, this locomotive is one of the most successful designs of all time. A 16-cylinder diesel electric motor provides a stomping 3,000 horsepower. Walk over to the locomotive as indicated. Open the cab door and proceed inside. To take control, you want the engineer's seat. Head over and sit down. Safety always comes first on the railroad. So to start with, we need to let those around us know this locomotive is operational. Begin by turning the forward headlights control to bright. There are three key controls to operating this locomotive. The reverser, brakes, and throttle. The reverser determines direction of travel. Put this into forward. To the left is the auto brake, which applies brakes along. Well, I don't scream as much. That's all right. 
American Ark. Includes the basic engineer training on the flat motor. So let's bring it to a stop. Move the auto brake to initial reduction. As with applying power, too much brake pressure applied too quickly can be detrimental to the train and its cargo.
but uh, now you can adjust the weather now. trying to figure out, trying to still try to figure out the game because I only had it that long, but for so long. So, ooh, dang, we had a crash. I don't know what happened. Cut. Wow. That's why I said the game is still doing things and still going through its phases, so that's why I said I can't really get on here and do what I want. So I'll let y'all see. Let me see. Let me show y'all this play. Browser. What had popped up? But y'all didn't see it. Y'all can't see it. That's what y'all mean. Yeah, but the game crashed. So I guess there's still some things that need to be tightened up on it. So all I do is just send it, send the information and restart. You know, it'd be nice to just play the game as it is, but sometimes these games have a have a little flaw and stuff, so you got to deal with that. But it, it, other than that, it, it is a bad, it's not a bad simulator. other games out because they wasn't optimized. They were just taking me to too, too many um, too many changes. So now I may run this. Oh yeah, I did finish. I did do this. Well, y'all get a chance to see this. See me messing around with the freight. So that's part of the training too. I forgot what I was doing. So y'all get a chance to see that if it don't crash again. Yeah. But I expect whatever. You know, just. Sort of wasting time, so to speak. <clears throat> so I won't be able to stream today at all, as far as I know, because I'm already already busy doing some stuff. And, you know, this is where I where I left off at. I forgot. I guess I just got one of the cars first. to catch it later deal, you know. I almost didn't want to buy the game and then I looked and I was like, man, I'm gonna spend it like forty plus dollars for the game. But with the DLC, if I would have paid the full price, the DLC was like forty dollars a piece plus the game itself. Like about well, almost two hundred bucks. So I paid about a hundred and I only paid like half the price. No, it was hundred and thirty dollars. Yeah, it was hundred and thirty dollars. So I caught it caught it like on sale. Like 20% off. Yeah, I'm sort of up in the middle of the night just to try to get this done because I won't have any time uh, in, in the morning as well as uh, any so tired. And so I wouldn't have to cancel uh, the stream. I gotta get this. Uh,
and this rail driver sometimes it has to be rethink. So I, that's why I'll be between. Uh, luckily, I know where some of the. Well, the trains are a little bit different than the uh, than the plane. So once you get going, you got to sort of power up first before you release the brakes. So I was messing around with that. I wish I would have recorded it when I was messing around with it. I may go back to it to the module just but it to help everybody understand what I had to do. so y'all can see exactly where I started at. Sometimes you might have to restart it just because you might have lost track of what you're supposed to be doing. So it gives you at least that, that space to do that. So I think these are probably the only DLCs that I pay for right now. <laughs> uh, they want so much money for this stuff, man. So the donations that I had actually went to this. And it's going in my pocket is why I said I uh, get donations. It doesn't go in my pocket. It goes towards games. It goes towards, towards the regular like, like the team. It's running something for the red. It doesn't put a 
Hopefully y'all can see this, or y'all see where I'm coming from. A lot of stuff is on YouTube. Yep. So this is mainly all I'm pretty much doing is, you know, all these tutorials and stuff. There's a lot to it. You know what I mean, it sort of helps you understand what you get into. Yeah, so it's not it's not a bad uh simulator. So um get back in game. So I'm still I mean I used to be real savvy with this stuff and then, you know, once you get into it and you forget. Oh, I missed something. Okay, this is Junction and Training Module. I'll probably go into this so y'all can kind of see. And then you can go back into the training. That's what I like about it because you can go back, even though you pass, you can still go back to familiar yourself because that's something that they always do. You know. I mean, I want to get out here. And Welcome to driver training at the training center. Today, we'll be learning how to drive this EMD SD40-2 locomotive in BNSS railway livery. The SD40-2 started production in 1972, with the last unit being built in 1986. So, this is the thing. This is how I learned. 3,000 horsepower. And weighing at least 170 tons, the SD40-2 is rated with a continuous tractive effort of 831,000 pounds. 
over 4,000 SD40-2 locomotives were produced by EMD in various configurations. And many are still in use today, 50 years after they were first introduced. When you're ready to begin, climb aboard. Or at least get to make something out of the deal. the generator field switch. This needs to be enabled for the throttle to control the power of the train. All this stuff is interactive. Uh, it's all switches and whatnot. So technically drive the train. So they're going back to the train. We this locomotive requires the reverser handle to be inserted before operation. Okay, so throttle. Uh, the reverser determines the direction of travel. So that's what I like about the tutorial, because they actually explain how the thing works. So put it in forward. So we ready to switch the front headlights on. Regardless of the time of day or weather, all locomotives must have their headlights on. Remembering the following sequence. Independent on, auto off, throttle on, independent off. Let's go through that slowly and understand why. First, fully apply the independent brake. Now, this will ensure that regardless of anything else, your train won't move. Right. So it's all safety. It's based on safety. Whatnot. Next, fully release the automatic brake. This will release the brakes from the rest of the train, but you don't go anywhere because those independent brakes right. are holding you. Verify the power is generated. So verify power is generated. Finally, release the independent brake and you'll start moving. This is a great practice to get used to because it'll help you with two key areas. The first is that you verify that the train will take power before you release the brake. Right. You yeah. don't want to find yourself without power and having to hurriedly put the brakes back on. Uh, the second is that having power applied as you release the independent brake ensures that you won't roll backwards. Right. 
a steeper hill start. You may even need to start with more power. And this is something you can practice and get used to as you find yourself out on the railroad. If you have any locomotives on the rear of the train behind freight cars, you can press the banking comms button to enable radio communication right. for those yeah. remote yeah. units. This will ensure that they operate their throttle and brakes in unison with your own locomotive, giving you much needed extra control on your journey. Right. Uh, press it now, just to get practice, even though there aren't any connected. Right. So this is the communication box right here. Banking comms. Coasting is a method used to efficiently maintain speed and reduce motor stress and maintenance requirements. Right. Off. Come to a stop in the indicated position using the independent brake. Independent brakes apply only to the locomotives in the formation and are much faster to apply and release than the automatic brake, which operates on the entire train. direction with a reverser, then change the junction indicated, either by walking over to it or using the map. Proceeding, check the two couplers are in the right position to allow for automatic coupling. Look at the rear coupler on your train and ensure it's open. Operate the cut bar if it is closed to release it.
walk over to the freight cars you're going to couple to and check where coupling and knuckle is open to. Operate the cut bar here to open the knuckle. Well, I think this is where I was supposed to hook up to the uh, cars over here. I think I had already did this one. Um, should be on the track, but I am on the track. So I'm breaking the the trains do run through this uh, through these junctions. You know, even if you are over here on the side, the game is active. You know, at all times. So you just put yourself in a dangerous situation, and I'm surprised you don't actually get ran over in here. But yeah. all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up this, and I'm talking as I go. It may frame rates may be all off track or time it may be off but oh well just going to make the best of it uh, before awesome. coupling cars always check the knuckles are open or you'll just bounce right off right so that's why I said a lot of the stuff you got to you got to get out the train and do the work <laughs> Uh, some people go, oh, I don't want to play the game like they don't play snow runners. Oh, I can't play the game because I don't understand it. Well, understand it. Help yourself understand it first before you say, okay, well, I can't do this. I can't do that. I have patience enough to play with the game. There's nothing wrong with the game enough. I don't like the game where, and that's probably why this game is so expensive, so interactive. It's crazy. is correctly aligned and the cars are ready to couple. All right. Couple up to the cars by gently driving into them at a slow speed. The most freight uses automatic knuckle couplers, so they will automatically couple once they connect.
Hey, nice work. I changed direction with the reverser and moved the train forward into the indicated siding. Remember to apply a little power before releasing brakes. Right. While it's not strictly necessary in the training center, this is the time to start forming great habits. That's what it's about. I need to learn great habits.
Since you have freight cars coupled, you should slow down using the automatic brake and get the extra braking effort from those freight cars. The automatic brake applies brakes throughout the entire train. by using the external camera or by walking to the cars on foot. That's it for this training module. Okay. 
run the uh, other training module just to uh just to do it anyway. Just for the uh move time long because all they're gonna do is continue to make um I'm just gonna continue to progress. The more I do it, the better I get. So it doesn't even bother me. It's all kinds of like I said. I don't even know I have an opportunity to go to the next training module because of uh the way things are acting. I'm not gonna even go through it. I'm gonna go back through the training again. Kill the rest of the time out. And if you're interested you'll see it. If you don't, you ain't gotta look at it. Probably ain't gonna look at it anyway, so and it's no big deal. I'm used to it. Okay. I just decided to let y'all uh, take part of uh, what I'm what I'm doing. So that's okay. On the game, the best is the difference between you know how you, you get a little bit more stuff. Yeah, so. I went on ahead and, and paid for it for the simple fact because I love training that much and it doesn't bother me to. Uh, Go back through these training modules a little bit. Just cover the rest of the time. Uh, I gotta get back in the bed. I'm gonna try to do this before five, four o'clock now in the morning. So I had a deep uh, nap. I got in. That's why I'm up now. Plus, it beat the crap out of us anyway. And we uh, just we had to do new linen. We had to do all that rewire. Welcome to Training you know, Sim World. An immersive uh, and highly detailed rail simulation featuring authentic routes and trains from around the world. This is the training center. So Here I'm you can learn about how to navigate and interact with the world as well as how to operate the many trains. Let's start by looking around. Find oh. each of the markers and look at them. Your current objective is shown at the top left of the screen. Walk to the blue marker to complete the current objective. So I'm just going through the motion. I'll help you all see what I already went through already. Which maybe too much for you. I'm a thinking person, so I like this kind of stuff. Go the map right there to get a chance to look at. You've been awarded some action points. These are displayed in the top right corner of the screen and count towards your overall experience level for the game. This is one of the many types of root tasks to be discovered. Keep an eye out for many more types and styles of root tasks, which can involve placing, collecting, or fixing a variety of things. Head into the main building and you'll continue your induction there. So 
that's this is what I'm like because you can you can actually walk around this place now and that's what what it's all about. So, I'm sure Facebook got something to do with the kookiness. It's okay. Nothing new. They catch up. They may not. So I don't care. As long as I go through the numbers, it's all that matters. As long as they make sure I get I get credit for me being on here an hour or two hours or whatever it is. It doesn't bother me. All right. So far, session death. Sort of backtracking, going back to what I already did for. So. So I can actually sit down. A lot of people didn't even know you could do all this, but this is what this game is all about. So it's over here and sit down. Take a seat and wait. You can pause Transcend World at any point to review objectives and a lot of other information about what's happening at the moment. Try it now, and then return to the game after you've had a look around. So I can escape, escape, pause, back, go back. Now I'm about to get back up. Now that we've covered some of the basics of moving around and interacting with the environment, let's take a walk through the building and find the trains. So now this is what we're going to do. This may be boring for y'all, but stuff that I already had to do, I'm going to do it again. Because the only thing that I think that it's not going to be that much, that big of a deal. So. But, like I said, can't keep playing ETS all the time and then don't play my other games. I spend too much money on these games not to get full benefit out of them. So be surprised I play Mario Brothers or something. I'm gonna keep, you know, just playing the one same old game. Sorry. But those are all the trains right there. This is Central Square. From here you can explore the main training center depot and surrounding yards. Alright, I gotta head out to the rail yard down the steps. Board to get down the steps and stuff. That's what I like about this is very interactive. And it communicates with you properly. Your journey operating trains is just getting started here in the training center. Remember, you can always come back here from the main menu right. to refresh your knowledge That's if you're unsure like about anything. You can keep, you can keep, keep going, keep, trick, keep chopping at, well, sharpening the axe, like they say. These are how to set the tree down. Alright, so I'm headed over there to the rail yard. Right, so I got another map right here or something right here. Continue to learn and other training modules here in the training center, and then you'll be ready to take on more challenges in other environments. And that's what it's all about. So I love it. So I'm uh also this is all connected to uh Dovetail Live. So I had to set up an account in order to do that, in order to do what I'm doing. <clears throat> and all it does is make me better. Now this is where the screen element is what I want everybody to see. So this actually explains all the controls and whatnot in the game as you play it. So no, you can't just get in here and just think you're going to just get behind the wheel of the train and not know what to do. You know, I don't have a habit of just running, just doing stuff all out of character. So, you know, so this is something that I've always did, and I decided to let y'all see what I do also. Yeah. This module will and cover the on-screen overlay, beautiful. known as the heads-up display, or HUD that is shown when you are in control of a train. All right, so Climb up the ladder into the locomotive and then sit in the seat. So, 
outside anything else, this is what I don't mind keep doing. You know, and those that know me know me personally know that this I do this I can do this all day long. So I mean the train is cool to ride to drive. But if you don't know how to if you don't know the basics of how to drive it, you can't do nothing. <laughs> you can't do nothing. I wouldn't even be able to do half the stuff without actually going through training. I couldn't even be a be a bus driver without going through training. So everybody knows what that's all about. You know. All right, so I'm gonna go and drop, sit in the seat. And too much thought of. Welcome to the most important seat in the train. While sitting here, you'll be in full control. Before you think about moving the train, though. Let's look at the HUD overlay that's appeared on the bottom right. The heads-up display is a guide to what your train is doing. Right. The main part of the HUD is the speed display. Yeah. A white bar will appear around the outside to show your current speed, and the red mark indicates your maximum permitted speed. All right. This is the direction display. An arrow will indicate forward, reverse, and neutral directions. This is the power display. A number will indicate what position the power or throttle control is in. This is what I like about this. I mean, this teaches you, this is like in These are the brake indicators. The, brake indicators. the exact one shown will vary by train and will often be visible in the train itself on various gauges. They tell you what's happening in the braking system. The most important one is the BC or brake cylinder. If that's reading zero, then your brakes are released. Right. Anything else, and brakes are applied and you won't be able to move. Right. You gotta go to the basics. Every train can have small variations in the HUD unique to the way it works, mm -hmm. but they will mostly look the same. As you learn to control new trains, Study the HUD and learn how it helps you operate it. If you want I to like see this again, you can rerun this training module at any time. Right, that's what I like about it. I have to keep myself familiar with this stuff. So I don't have no problem with going back through this stuff over and over again because it helps me understand. And it's like I'm about to be leveling up a team with the training center. So that's what it's all about. You can't go go through the training and what the heck you think you know, you know can't you gotta gotta go through training for anything I wouldn't be able to do half my job if I didn't have training you know, so you can neglect training it can be tedious sometimes but it's worth it because then you're you're sharpening your skill set in this training module, you're going to look at making the train move, and then bringing it to a stop again. While many trains have different controls and are operated in different ways, there are basically always three controls that are common and are required to move the train. The reverser sets the direction between forwards and backwards. The brakes are used to slow or stop the train. The throttle controls how fast the train accelerates. Right. We want to move the train forward, so move the reverser in that direction. Yeah. Keep the brake control in release until you can see the brake pipe control needles are reading five bars, yeah. so, pointing upwards. So those are this the will release the brakes fully. On the keyboard. Okay. Now you see how those uh, indicators are actually. Um, so you got the VP is the brake pipe gauge, uh, and it has to be reached at least uh, 4.8 bars on the hood in order to release the brake. So you would be sitting there if you don't have that skill set to really understand that this you got to do in order to get the train to move. And you're going to be just sitting there. Okay? So now, you know, because now I done went back 
to the basics. Now I actually know what buttons do what now. So if I press this, every break. Watch the brake cylinder, or BC gauge, right. to see it gradually reduce to zero, right. which tells you... Apply some throttle to get the train moving. Alright, so this... Technically on my, uh, what's the name is... My, uh, the rail driver. So I'm going to use the A button. As you apply power, so, notice the amp bar rising. Yep. This is the amount of power being fed into the traction motors. Right. And D, that can slows it down. Now that you've reached your target speed, you can move the throttle control back to zero. The train will then coast on level ground, and the train will only slow down very gradually. Right. Got these high end PCs. Perfect. Now this year your money won't be worth it. I mean what's gonna be uh waste. While the specifics yeah. of operating brakes vary from because train I've to train, the basic process of stopping is fundamentally the same. The most top top notch game. Why? Bring this train to a complete stop by holding the brake control in the apply state until you see the brake pipe control needle in the center of your cab desk showing about four bar. Okay, so that. The amount of braking you'll need to apply also varies depending on whether you're going uphill or downhill, and how heavy your train is. Stopping a train is one of the biggest challenges of right. controlling them, particularly stopping them in the right place. Right. That concludes this module. Restart the module to learn the steps again, or move on to the next module. Yeah, so I'm going to switch over to the next module, but I do this stuff so I can get myself, because if you do something repetitive, you always, it'll come naturally. I like that. So let's see. Let's see what this is all about. So I don't, mind going through the training modules or whatnot. I don't mind it. You know, even though the game is maybe acting funny, I don't care. Because this is what I do. You know, even if I wasn't streaming, this is what I do. This module will go over the fundamentals of operating junctions to change the path your train will take right. and how to navigate using the map. Most rail lines around the world are controlled remotely by a signaling center or dispatcher. From the perspective of the train, the direction taken is automatic. But within yards and depots, many small and frequent movements are required. This makes remote control of the track impractical. In these locations, the direction taken is manually controlled. You can set junctions by either walking up to them and interacting with them, or going to the 2D map and changing them from there. So just walk Let's up. change this junction by hand first. Walk over to it and change it by operating the lever. Notice how the point blades move on the track. Try moving it a few more times until you can see how it works. Yep. No problem. I like that. I don't want to see if I can get turned around. I'm talking to you, but I see. Train, and then you can look at the point, map. So I don't care. You know, see, this is all helping me. I don't care about that. 
And I'm still streaming and I cover my phone to get my, uh, whatever I'm supposed to get. Alright, E. Your junctions are set correctly. Let's get the train moving and see it all working. Okay. If you can't remember how to make the train start and stop, there is a training module you can rerun to remind yourself. Right. I love it. Thank you. Thank Keep you the brake control and release until you can see the brake pipe control needles are reading five bars, pointing uh, upwards. This uh, will release the brakes fully. All right. So, go right back over here. Watch the brake cylinder, or BC gauge, to see it gradually reduced to zero, which tells you that the brakes are now fully released and you can move the train. Yeah. Apply some throttle to get the train moving. Twenty-five kilometers, actually fifteen miles an hour. Which I gotta figure out how to actually switch that over to. Uh, well, what's the name? But it's probably set up in Memphis anyway. On purpose. I just like the whole concept of training. I'm 
sentido. Especially if you ain't sure if this thing is going right or not. And it's 4 o'clock in the morning. You've been in bed. But. Girl, I need to do something in order to go right back to bed. So. Now that you've reached your target speed, you can move the throttle control back to zero. The train will then coast on level ground, and the train will only slow down very gradually. Bring this train to a complete stop by holding the brake control in the apply state until you see the brake pipe control needle in the center of your cab desk showing about 4 bar. Right. That concludes this module. All the junctions in the training center are manual, so you can go anywhere you wish using the map and by changing junctions manually. If you want to practice, Go to Explore on Foot in the Training Center. You'll find trains dotted around, and you can practice driving them and moving them around the yard. Don't forget, you can always rerun this training module later if it. you can't remember any of what's been covered. Alright, that's what I like about it. I'm studying, I'm studying getting more training of it. We done already level, hit level 4 just in the Training Center. All this stuff is being, cock I mean, being uh, counted. That's why I said it. it's repetitive. You know, it's never ending. That's what I like. Games is that they're never ending. All right. But now, I don't want to go there. I want to go to where it was explained. Um, what's the name? So, let's see if we can go and find that. Then I can go to any of these trains and hop in them and hang out in them, you know. But because I don't, if I don't stick with the basics, I, of course I ain't gonna know nothing. Let me go to this. Let me go to this one. Introduction. I just show you this one. Uh, one. I'm trying to go back to where I was. I think I had already did all that. Now, okay, I think this is the one that I was messing around with. Let's see. Yep, but this is what I do in my spare time. If I'm not streaming, I figure the game out off off screen. But you know, sometimes you gotta sort of record um, the footage to help people understand. Welcome to Train Sim World 2, an immersive and highly detailed rail simulation featuring authentic routes and trains from around the world. You've just been awarded some action points. Yeah. These are displayed in the top right corner of the screen and count towards your overall experience. It is necessary to be fully observant of the surrounding world. 
practice by looking up, down, left, and right. I don't know, man. It's it's it's, it's Facebook. Uh, it may be Facebook and it be the internet. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm not gonna be on here that long. But I'm tired. Like put on my phone. So, you know, it's not that good. Internet is, is, is up. It's just one act so I don't, I don't Besides I'm operating trains, train. there are lots of requirements to navigate on foot. Try moving around now. And that's all I can do. Maybe, maybe the computer. I don't know. But like I said, I don't have money. Going on this is one of many interactives to be discovered, but not here. all of them will be as easy to find as this one. Climb yeah, aboard and take Facebook a seat in the cab with the engineers for a up. short ride. And ain't nobody on here. You know, everybody taking a seat, so why is you know, other people on here? That's what you're talking about. I'm glad you're probably be sitting out of here and it's about, it's about another 15 minutes, but you can sleep. Maybe they catch up and do this or whatever. And I'm just, I'm This game is very high detail, so, you know, when it comes down to detail, ATS is nothing. I can't touch this game. You know, a lot of things are just like that. Uh, uh, it's on, it's on the list. You can pause the experience at any point and review previous and current objectives. Check it out now, and then return to the game when ready. A lot of time will be spent operating trains. So when ready, sit in the engineer's seat. Oh, I can sit in. So I can sit in any seat that's up our lap. Ha <laughs> All right, let's get up. Let's go over here. Yeah, that's why I said, a lot of times, I mean, I can fit 20, 50 cars, it's halfway deep. It just went, you start getting to the detailed stuff because you're at 20,
understand my uh, CPU is at 100%, so that's a lot. Probably acting like that because brought the frame rates a little bit up further but I think that's the internet because um yeah, that's the internet and that's just trying to act all cookie and stuff A heads-up display has appeared on the right side of the screen. This is a guide to what the train is doing. This is the speed display. The white needle shows current speed. The red marker indicates the maximum permitted speed. This is the direction display. An arrow will indicate forward, reverse, and neutral direction. That's why I don't do this all the time, man. To do it every, all the time and to be doing this kind of crazy. This is a power today. display. A number will indicate what position the power control is in. These are brake indicators. Yep. They show the state of the various brake systems, allowing independent management of them. In the top right are the signal and speed limit displays. These feature an indication of what is approaching and a countdown distance to when they will come into effect. Some of these displays can be hidden via the settings menu for a more challenging experience. This train is ready to go. Pull the indicated handle all the way back to get moving.
impact grade offers the ability to operate powerful and heavy freight trains on one of America's most stunning and famous railroads. You are currently riding an AC4400 CW locomotive. These are the workhorses of trains operating over the San Pat Grade. The CSX yeah. Transportation having more than 600 in its office. Yeah, I have a CSX uh, vehicle there in the street. I see these kind of trains all the time. Train Sim World allows you to ride and drive trains from a selection of internal and external camera angles. Let's take a look now by exploring the exterior of this train. Take a look at what else there is to enjoy. Welcome to Pennsylvania. Crossing the Allegheny Mountains, the Sand Patch Grade is a vital link in the sprawling CSX rail system. Master the controls of powerful American freight locomotives operating out of the vast Cumberland Yard facility. Whether the sun is shining, there's a rain shower, or a full-on snow blizzard, it's up to you to keep the rail traffic moving. Battle your way over one of the steepest railroad grades on the East Coast. Along the way, don't forget to place safety posters, collect lost hard hats, put up no trespassing signage, and fix broken snow markers. Welcome to the Sand Patch Grade. Cool. That's the Unsound Boat. Beautiful. Oh, Sand Patch Grade Double Fire. Moving up the ranks, y'all. That's all I'm looking at. I don't care about nothing now. All right. All right, I'm getting sleepy now. Two hours is good enough. Sorry for the lagging. It's a, oh well. Can't do nothing about it. But thanks for coming out, checking video out, whatever. I'll catch y'all on this video. So I am tired. I'm getting tired now. I'll catch y'all on this video. Maybe next time. We figure out what, and I don't worry about it. It's always something. So. All right. But I'm sleeping now. I'm falling asleep now. Almost five o'clock, that's good enough in with two hours. I'm gonna try to at least push to two and a half, but can't make it. I mean, all this choppiness and maybe even tighter. I'm not gonna even worry about it. So, y'all see what I'm doing is I'm not on here nine times a ten, I'm playing this game. So, now it's a to see what I do off, off screen and.
just ran it. Alright, catch you on the next video. Cut the switch out.